Hello and welcome to another brief tutorial on applied energistics. This time we're going to be going over annihilation planes and formation planes. So the first question that I'm going to answer is how exactly do does a formation plane know when to place items and what items to place? It does this when an item is inserted into the network. So if we change the formation plane priority to be higher than anything else, like the storage bus, then we place an item into the network, it will get placed as though it were being stored. Now if we lower the priority to so that the storage bus has higher, the item will instead get placed in the storage. So a formation plane is essentially a storage bus that only has a single slot and can only place blocks. So let's try raising the priority back up and we'll place a whole stack in at a time. You can see most of them, most of them went to this storage crate and then one got placed. Similar to storage buses, formation planes also have a filter slot. So if we do regular stone and then mossy stone, so regular stone will go into the storage crate and then mossy stone will go here. So if we show that off, we'll see stone does not, mossy stone does. Now an annihilation plane destroys anything there's storage for. So if we place an item here, it will immediately try to store it in this storage crate. If we were to remove this storage bus so that there was no place for the item to go, then annihilation plane will not break it because it is trying to store the item in front of it. It is similar to an import bus. So the equivalent is a storage bus for a formation plane, and then an import bus for an annihilation plane. So if we put this storage bus back down, this block will break. Just took a minute. So to recap, an annihilation plane is like an in-world import bus and a formation plane is like an in-world storage bus. So we can use the storing ca capacity of the formation plane to make a recipe for the pure daisy. In this case, we're going to use a separate subnetwork shown by this controller. Each of these formation planes are hooked up to this controller and then an interface which will try to store any items placed in these slots and then a second interface which will have the recipe that we're going to use. Now if we take a look with the network visualization tool you can see this is not part of the network. We need to power this and it, you can see if we just do this these two controllers being on the same network is not allowed. So we need to separate them and only allow power through by using a quartz fiber. If we take a look at the network visual visualization tool, you can see these are two completely separate networks. All right, so in this mod pack, living rock is made with moss stone. Typically, it's made with regular stone, so keep that in mind. This pattern here is just one moss stone to one living rock. We're going to place it in this interface, which, if you remember, is connected to this network, the main network. And this subnetwork, the only function it is going to have is to push the items that are placed in this interface via the recipe. And the only place it can store them is on top of these formation planes. So if we run the recipe, you can see after we feed it some moss stone, you can see it's going to place them. And the leftover ones should go right here. Uh, that's why they're still scheduled. All right, so now that we've got Living Rock, how do we get it back into the network? Well, we can use these annihilation planes to do so. Remember, these are like import buses, so they need to be connected to the main network. So we will connect them all back to here. So 
we're going to use a cable anchor and sneak our way by this. The annihilation planes are hooked up, but now they break everything, not just what we want them to. As you can see, they just break it as soon as it's placed, not allowing it to craft. So the, what we need to do is filter the storage of these annihilation planes so that the only thing they can store is the finished product. One possible solution is to have a secondary subnetwork for the output. It's dangerous to have the annihilation planes and the formation planes on the same network. It can allow for a loop where the annihilation plane will attempt to store the block in the formation plane and then break it, store it, break it, store it, break it, store it. So in this particular setup, you can see I've got three networks. The main network, which is supplying the power to the two subnetworks. This has the pattern, which goes into an interface in the first subnetwork. This is connected to the formation planes, while the annihilation planes are connected via storage bus to this locked basic drawer. This will only accept the item shown on front, in this case, living rock. So if we go to do another craft, you can see it will place the moss stone. Give it a minute. And then as soon as this living rock is done being converted, it will be stored directly into this storage drawer via the storage bus. The, this original network, the main net, will extract via the import bus. So as you can see, it's going to store it in the main net. Now that will clear the craft because it's being added to the main network. So as you can see, having a separate network for specific storages is a very useful skill when using annihilation and formation planes. One last thing to note is that a formation plane on your main network at a high priority will attempt to store anything it can in world. This, uh, this can cause issues, as you can imagine. There's also a setting to drop blocks as items. So if you, if you take a look at a stone, it'll just chuck it versus as a block, it'll place it. 